How many leads do you get each week? Internet leads, referrals, past clients coming back, buyers and sellers. What's the total? There's no right or wrong answer here. You might be getting five to 10 leads a week and have your hands full as a solo agent, or you might be getting dozens or even hundreds of leads a week as part of a big team. The thing is, no matter where you are on the lead spectrum, you need to be great at follow-up. Imagine if you're on a team and you're getting a couple hundred leads every week, but you don't have a great system for following up with them. What would that be like? A nightmare. Like I can imagine it. It's not something I would love to live or actually continue to imagine, but I can imagine it. That's the voice of Isaac Guzman. He's with the Daniel Beer team in San Diego. They're part of our Homelight Elite program, the top 1% of agents on our platform. And you don't get that honor without having an airtight follow-up system. Over our next two episodes, Isaac is going to share exactly what that follow-up system looks like. The emails, calls, and texts, how many, how often, and when, stages, statuses, pipeline management, and more. It's a two-week masterclass in following up, and it starts now. This is The Walkthrough. Hello there. Happy April. My name's Matt McGee. I'm the editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center, and welcome to The Walkthrough. This is a weekly podcast. We have new episodes that come out every Monday. This is the show where you're going to learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. If you want to get involved in the show, there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, Find me in our Facebook listener community. Go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Walkthrough, and the group should come right up. You can also leave a voicemail or send me a text. The number is 415-322-3328, or just send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. You know, there are certain phrases in real estate that you've probably heard a million times. Location, location, location comes to mind for me. Every industry has these phrases. Over the 20 years or so that I was in uh, SEO and digital marketing, I came to loathe the phrase, content is king. I mean, yeah, I get the point, but enough already. There's another phrase in real estate that I know you've heard, and I promise I'm going to do my best to only say it this one time over these next two episodes. You ready? The money is in the follow-up. Think about it. Getting leads isn't really that tough these days. Run some Facebook ads, do some consistent video marketing, stay in touch consistently with your database. The hard part is your follow-up, what to do and what to say once a new lead comes in. You heard Isaac Guzman a few moments ago. He's the head of agent growth for the Daniel Beer team. He's been an agent himself. He's been a productivity coach and also an assistant team leader. Now, with the beer team, he's in charge of everything that happens from the moment a lead comes in until there's a purchase or listing agreement signed. And there are a lot of moving parts. The beer team has 36 agents and 16 staff members. They average about 200 leads a week, and they did $336 million in volume in 2020. On today's show, we're going to go deep into the follow-up system that powers all of that success. So you'll hear Isaac talk about the 25 touches that they do with a new lead, how those touches happen and what they say. You'll even hear like which days they leave a voicemail and which days they don't. We're getting really specific here. You'll learn why the beer team are big believers in following up with video text messages and We're going to talk about how quickly they react when a new lead comes in. So grab a pen, be ready to take some notes. As I said, we are going to go deep today. It's not every day that you get to see behind the curtain of how a Homelight Elite team operates. At the very end of the show, I'll have a one more minute segment for you as well. But for now, let's start this masterclass on following up. Here is part one of my conversation with Isaac Guzman. 
I know different teams, different agents have different definitions for what a lead is. Sometimes if the person isn't ready to buy or sell for six months or a year, they don't consider that a lead. How does your team define a lead? Our team defines a lead as somebody is a real person, valid contact information that has the desire to do something real estate related. At some point. At some point. So the, the timing doesn't matter. Nope. So if you a lead comes in and your ISA or your agent determines that they're probably a year or two off, you're still treating them. You have a system to communicate with them. 100%. How many leads do you guys get in a, a typical week or a month? What are we talking? About 200 a week. 200 leads a week. All right. And where do they come from? Uh, various sources. So we got our proprietary website, San Diego homefinder.com sold by Dambeer.com. We got realtor.com. We got home light. We have uh, Zillow flex partnership, Ojo, and we have a couple other lead providers, um, people that flip houses, but the person doesn't want an all cash offer after all. So then they send it to us for a referral fee, Facebook ads, Google ads. Facebook, Google, pay-per-click, Google local service ads, and then listing, right? Our listing queries. If you're getting 200 leads a week, you obviously have to have a great follow-up system in place, especially for the level of production that you guys are doing. Tell me your role in putting this and and executing the follow-up system. So I manage all things sales. So from the time that a lead is generated all the way till we have a the signed agreement in the form of an RPA or an RLA, uh, so a purchase agreement or a listing agreement, that's my world. Convert it to what happens, what, what happens next, what hap- who does what, um, all of that and everything involved in that and the training there. Now, obviously, there's a team that also helps. I have a lead ISA who's so powerful and he runs his unit really well. And um, they're very autonomous as far as like um, we give them the playbook, we give them the guidelines. These are exactly what you do, but also like a lot of it has to do with the skill set that they've developed over time and they train together and all that. But ultimately it all falls on me once a lead is created. Let's talk about that playbook. And and I'm going to ask you to walk me through sort of how that looks. When a lead comes in, sometimes these are going to be brand new leads you've never spoken to. Sometimes they're going to be people you have spoken. They might be referrals, right? Sometimes they're past clients. How do you sort of organize your leads? Like what do the different, what do the different buckets look like? You're talking about when they first come in. So first is when we haven't spoken to a lead, it is simply categorized by how many attempts have been made or what day they are in. So what I mean by that is, like you come in as a lead, Matt, you're Matt new lead day one until you're Matt new lead day whenever you get pushed into the pond, which right now is day 10. Okay. And I'm sorry, day seven. We're expanding it. We're actually in the middle. Since you and I have spoken, we're, we're tacking on an additional three days because of some systems we've put in place okay. um, that are going to allow us to continue that same high volume um, reach out or outreach for an additional three days because we think that that's valid because of some of the research we've done. But basically, you are Matt day one and you have X amount of contact attempts. You're Matt day two, boom, boom, boom. You're Matt day three, all the way through until we talk to you. Then once we talk to you, we have a whole different dispositioning system. Okay, let's talk. Okay, so let's talk about the before you speak with them part. So that lasts. For 10 days now is what you're shifting to, a 10-day system. And you're talking about multiple, very frequent touches. How many per day? And what do, the, what do those communications look like? And who does them? So the ISA team does those. And actually, so I think the first time you and I had spoken and way back, I think I said something about 21 or 23 contacts in the first seven days. It's actually 25. I literally just counted them right now because I'm like, you know what? I haven't actually sat there and counted them. I, just, I had a good feel for that. It's actually 25 um, and their, their attempts. So it's going to go three calls right out the gate, right? Um, text, email, 
find them on social media, set them up on a search or a market update. That's all day one. That's uh, so that so that all that happens on day one. Find them on social media and do what? Friend them or friend and message. Friend and message on social media. And you're saying something like, hey, we got your contact information. Thanks for your interest in one, two, three Main Street, whatever it might be. Yeah, it's just, hey, tried calling you. Wasn't sure if uh, Facebook Messenger was best. You were looking for homes on our website. Uh, just checking in. When's a good time to check? Okay. Super simple. So that's day one. Yeah, that's seven attempts on day one. Seven attempts on day one. Wow. How often do you get replies on day one? Uh, depends on how quick you are to pull the trigger. I'd say about 20% of the time. And if they reply, then they go into that other disposition. Yeah. They, there's a separate. Okay. So, so they don't reply on day one. You have this was a seven. Now it's a 10 day system. What does day two and day three and day four look like? What happens until they actually reply? So the way we do it is the ISA has the choice to pick on, on really just one day which is day two, they have their choice of how they want to follow up, but there's constraints on it. So it's call, text, email, or social media. You pick two of those. Any two you want, you just pick them, right? And they go there. And it's actually, so our new system, is it has a sequence already built in. So it's literally just like send this email or send this text or click here to make the call, right? So it's actually built into our, our Salesforce software now. And so that won't be launched fully in our ISAs all the way trained. And I'll have real numbers on that. Realistically, that probably won't happen for another three weeks. But we're doing it manually now. So at the moment, it's like a little bit slower than what it will be, call it a month from now. Okay, so the ISA on day two, the ISA picks a couple different ways that they want to communicate, again, with the same kind of messaging that was on day one. Similar. It's really just like, hey, circling back from yesterday. We shorten it down. Sure. Okay. That's fair. And then what happens for the rest of those seven and soon to be 10 days? It's actually pretty much the same thing. So we'll call, send a video message, send a text. Now on days three and four, we send out like production based or production grade videos, right? So news articles where we've been, where we've been featured in the news. So, I'm mean, sorry, news stories where we've been featured in the news, like Dan on television, talking about the market, kind of adding that. On day four, we have our culture video, which introduces them to the team, right? Things like that. And it's just like, we're just, honestly, we're just shooting shots, man. We're trying to get them to interact with some of something. And on day three, when you're sending these videos, are these emails? Or is it, again, hitting all the different ways? We have analytics on whether or not they open up the emails. Uh-huh. Right. And so we stick with email if they're opening or if the phone number is bad. Right. Because here's another thing that a lot of agents do is they go, oh, it's a bad number, bad lead. So if it's a bad if it's a bad phone, we just take out texting and calling and we just email them exactly what's supposed to happen. And we have a disposition for that called good email, bad phone. Gotcha. OK. Unless the email bounces, if the email bounces and the number's bad, then they're trash. So that covers, so what, what are we, we're day four now, that continues into day five, day six, day seven, just continuing. Day, yeah, so day four is call, don't leave a voicemail, send the culture video, email the culture video. Again, this isn't rocket science, right? The fifth day, we call, we do leave a voicemail, we send us text that just says something like, are you giving up on your home search? Same thing with the email. Subject line is, are you giving up on your home search? And then the email is just something real simple. Um, I believe it's just like, hey, we've noticed that you haven't been reaching out. You did reach out. And we're looking on our website on this date a couple of days ago. Were you, just, were you just browsing or are you actually interested in buying a home? Just let me know. Happy to help in any way I can. Day six, um, we don't leave a voicemail. Um, we just text their name with a question mark like Matt, right? Because they haven't answered. Maybe it's not Matt. And then the same thing with the email. The email is a little bit longer. It's just like Matt is the subject line. And the body's like, hey, I just want to make sure this email belongs to Matt. who reached out to us to buy or sell a home. Uh, can you please let me know if this actually belongs to that person? If not, I'll go ahead and remove you from our list. And at this point, we're just, we're just saying like, dude, are you like, I'll stop. I promise. Just engage with me. And then the last day, call, leave a voicemail. Um, we send them a text that says, are you ghosting me with the ghost emoji? Right. We do the same thing in the email. Um, and then that's about it. That's day seven. 
That's day seven. So, so in seven days, and again, you said you're changing this to a 10 day system um, right now, but 25 in seven days sounded like six or seven the first couple days and then two per day after that, right? Two, yeah. No, so it's seven day one, two day two, three, 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 four. For more great walkthrough content, join our listener community on Facebook. It's the place to connect with other agents, including the guests you hear on our show. You can influence upcoming episodes by suggesting guests and questions. And you'll get exclusive content that we don't share anywhere else. Just go to Facebook and search Home Light Walkthrough. Then click to join. It's that easy. As a walkthrough listener, you should be in this group. So join us today. Before we get back to the conversation, let's stop for a moment and recap what you just heard. I want to make sure you have time to write all that down. Isaac has been walking us through the seven-day follow-up system that the beer team does with a new lead. It's a 25-touch process that their ISAs use to make that first connection. And then once the connection happens, they pass the lead over to an agent, there's an appointment made, and so on. If you missed Isaac's recap at the end, let me repeat. Day number one, there are seven touches. Day two, there's two touches. Days three through day six are three touches each. Day seven is four touches. So that's 25 touches over seven days, 25 attempts to contact the lead. And you heard Isaac go into detail about the breakdown of texts, calls, and emails. And he even shared the specifics of what the ISAs say. I got a kick out of that day six outreach where it was just Matt, question mark. What I'd love for you to be doing is taking notes on all this for the next couple weeks. So you might have some notes listing that 25 touches, the day-to-day outreach right there. Then you'll have some notes about the temperature buckets that they use after contact is made, the different statuses they assign to each lead, and so forth. That is all coming up in these two episodes. For now, let's get back to the conversation. Isaac just walked us through that seven-day follow-up with a new lead. So somebody gets through this system and you have still not had any contact. What happens to them at that point? They get put in a pond, the post blitz pond. Okay. So the seven day thing is called the blitz. And after that, it goes into a pond. Will there be automated communication or is that up to someone to claim that lead? How does that work? So any agent can then go in and start trying to get those people. Um, So that's where a lot of our new agents start. They just go into the pond and they're trying to get a hold of this person again. And now they're just on a regular drip. Right. And they're just getting monthly follow up videos and they're getting the videos that everybody else gets, which is Dan or CEO talking about something real estate related. It could be a market update. It could be the three things you need to do to sell your home. Right. Like whatever that is. We had um, one listener question from our uh, from our Facebook listener community that I should probably ask right now, since we're talking about these seven contacts, two contacts, three contacts, uh, Lisa Taylor Fitter wanted to know for your team, what method of contact works the best? Do you get the most success with text, email, phone call? What works? Text message. Text message works the best. Yeah, we're, I mean, okay. So it depends on what you mean by the best. Which one gets the most response text? Which one do we have a higher outcome of sending appointment phone? And when you're sending text, do you ever do video text message? Do you ever have, have constantly? constantly? Okay. What does that, what does that look like? Hey, Matt, what's up? It's Isaac over here at the beer home team. You just reached, you just filled out a form on our website, San Diego homefinder.com. Looks like you're looking at a house in North County, San Diego, excited to help you with that. Go ahead and give me a call back at this number and we'll go ahead and get started on finding you the right home in San Diego. Looking forward to talking with you. Bye. Right. Or if it's been a little bit further down the road. So that's like the immediate one. You just filled out the form and then Later on, the messaging starts switching over to Matt. You had reached out on our website, San Diego Home Finder. You're looking for homes in North County, San Diego. And I just wanted to be a resource for you. Whether that's today, three weeks, or three years from now, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Make it a great day. And you're just shooting, you're just doing that right on your iPhone. There's no production involved. It's just just like you're doing a FaceTime call. You're just recording it and sending it via text. No, my, my crappy will help, my crappy video will outperform your non-existent one all day long. Because you won't do one if, if the production standard has to be high. You're not going to do it. 
So I'm just going to do it. And there's going to be kids in the background. There's going to be dogs barking. I'm going to have stuff in my teeth. My hair is going to be messed up. I'm going to like stutter. And who cares? Like no one cares. They want to see your face, right? That's where the connection happens? Well, it's like a whole thing. There's like a science to why we do it and why we want to deliver it within two minutes of, of an inquiry or within two minutes of actually speaking with somebody on the phone. And it's because of what we understand in sales psychology, which is, you know, the number one thing you got to do is overcome sales skepticism. Number two thing is you want to create, you want to handle uncertainty about you as a person. And so nothing handles those things better than sending out a video very quickly in a, in a real video, right? So in email, good production quality is really good, right? You kind of expect that. In the phone, it actually doesn't work as well. Over the phone, people want to just see your face. They want to hear the wind, right? The, the kid and the, like, I, my, my best videos that outperform for what I do, which is agent attraction, right? I'm, I'm recruiting for a team. They're the ones with my kids in them, right? Or whatever I happen to be doing at that moment. If I get off the phone with you, you're getting a video within two minutes. I don't care what I look like. However important you think video is, it's 10 times up. Right. It's creating something called a parasocial relationship. And let me tell you why video. Right. And by the way, I like I get paid zero dollars to support. I always have to remind my team, I don't get I, mean, I don't have a video sponsorship. It's just this important. Is without video, clients say what they're looking for. Number one thing they're looking for is honesty, integrity, right? Those types of things. Their number one complaint is poor communication. When you deliver a video within two minutes you automatically deliver something that short-term substitutes for honesty and integrity, which is relatability. Short-term. In the short-term, the, the, the thing that can fill in for integrity and honesty is relatability. Because if I can relate to you as a person, I kind of trust you. Right? I have a dog, you have a dog. You have a face, I have a face. You shoot videos and it's windy, it's windy where I live too. Right? It's just something about that. And then if you deliver it within two minutes, that shows that, hey, I'm not going to be a poor communicator throughout this transaction. Deliver video within two minutes of talking to anybody, it's going to change the game. Do you know offhand how that delivering video within two minutes impacted your conversion rate, your appointment rate, that whole? Our show rate went up by like 40%. So, but again, my mom's going to show up whether I do a video or not, right? But when you're investing in lead sources where the person speaks to you and they have no loyalty to you whatsoever, it's important that they show up. It's important that you do everything to tilt in, in, the, in the direction of showing up and video does that. Hey, I'm trustworthy. I'm a real person and I'm reliable. So all the things that you think about real estate agents, I'm not that. I'm the good stuff. Here's my video. And you're more likely to show up because it makes you feel committed too. Oh, it's a real person that I'd be just completely blowing off. You mentioned how quickly you respond. What is the beer team's target in terms of speed to lead? So it depends. But the, the reality is new lead comes in. We got to be, they have to be, the phone has to be ringing within five seconds. You want to call them back within five seconds? Yeah. Oh my God. So realtor.com lead comes in. Like you, there's no reason because of our coverage and our ISA team that is long. So here's the caveat. As long as it's between the hours of eight and mostly with the exception of two days, eight and 10 PM, you should be on the phone. We should be dialing you within five seconds. Now, for listeners that don't have the coverage you have, I, I, you said you have four or five ISAs now, and that team is growing. What is a realistic goal to set for Speed to Lead? Okay, so if it's on your proprietary, like your goal should be five minutes, honestly, if you don't have um, like the coverage. Do you want to know like what I really think about this? Or, okay. Um, I do. If you can't respond within 60 seconds, you shouldn't be buying minutes. Because we're going to beat you to it. Like Realtor.com, we're, you're going to send it to five agents. Hey, Matt, what's going on? Oh, you're getting another call? Yeah, that's just some other realtor. Don't worry, I got you taken care of. Like you're, you're out of the equation. Like unless, some, unless our office building falls down or something on one of our ISAs, like we're probably going to beat you to it, man. But five minutes, like so on, so for us, 
Like if they go to your private website or they are in one of your Facebook funnels, I think you have more time to play with realistically. Right. But, and, and by the way, like you're not competing with me, you're competing with the consumer experience, right? The expectation of the consumer experience, Matt, you call somebody and they don't answer. What do you do? If they don't answer, I'm calling the next person. Exactly. Right. And Matt didn't, we didn't plan that. That's because that's what consumers are, are led to believe. I'm not your competitor in San Diego. I'm not your competitor, man. Amazon has trained, Amazon's your competitor. They're the ones who train the consumer to think the way that they do now. And I, and so it's either like get in line or I don't know. I, I don't know what else to do besides get in line. Cause that's what we chose. I'm sure, I'm sure someone could prove me wrong and like argue me out of my pants and just like make me look like a fool on this. But our belief is that if you're not responding immediately, they're just going to move on to somebody else and yeah, you've lost, it's a wasted you've, opportunity. Yeah, you're going to follow up more than them and all that stuff. But the person who has a five-second response also probably follows up really well. You know, that's an interesting point Isaac made there at the end when he mentioned Amazon. We are all being trained to expect instant gratification. I made, I think it was a $16 order on Amazon. Must have been last Saturday night at about 10 o'clock. The item was on my doorstep at 11 a.m. Monday. I didn't even need it that fast. It just happened. We're all being trained to expect things instantly. So yeah, speed really matters, especially in your follow-up with leads. All right, stay tuned to the very, very end of the show today for another one more minute segment. I'll also preview part two of this conversation in just a bit. But for right now, let's do our takeaways segment. This is what stood out to me from today's conversation. Takeaway number one, the leads that no one has spoken to get put on a seven-day, 25-touch follow-up plan. They call this the blitz. It's seven touches on day one, two touches on day two. Days three through six are three touches each. And then the last day, day number seven, four more touches. This is a mix of calls, emails, and texts. And Isaac shared some of the scripts that they use for those contacts. Takeaway number two, if there's still no contact after that seven days, the leads go into what they call the pond. These folks will get monthly contacts from the team. And then any agent can go in and try to work those leads. Isaac said, this is where a lot of new agents spend their time. Takeaway number three, we had a question from our listener community about contact methods. Isaac said, texts get the most replies, but calls lead to the most appointments. Takeaway number four, the beer team is all in on video text messages. No production. You're just talking into your phone and sending it via text. Don't worry about your hair being perfect or anything. Just send the video as fast as you can. Here's the quote from Isaac. My crappy video will outperform your non-existent one all day long. Let me say that again. My crappy video will outperform your non-existent one all day long. Amen. Takeaway number five. The beer team's goal for speed to lead is five seconds. They want to start the follow-up process within five seconds. If you don't have dedicated ISAs who can do that, Isaac says five minutes is a more realistic goal. He also said, if you can't reply quickly, you shouldn't be buying leads because you'll be competing against teams like the beer team and their very sophisticated and successful follow-up system. Okay, coming up next week in part two, Isaac is going to walk us through how they follow up after they've spoken with a lead. You'll hear about their temperature buckets, talking about hot leads, nurture leads, watch, and so forth. And how do they follow up depending on the temperature of each lead? We're also going to talk about pipeline management, how they track progress through the follow-up campaigns, and how they build accountability into the system. Here's a preview of that. The reason you don't, you're don't, you not consistent at something or I'm not consistent at something is because I chose not to have somebody um, help me stay accountable in that particular area. I refuse to lean into accountability for that particular type of item and, and or I have some really 
crappy, low level, unthreatening level of accountability. That's all there is to it. That and more is coming up next week in part two with Isaac Guzman. All right, questions or feedback, you can leave a voicemail or send me a text. It's 415-322-3328. You can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com or just look me up in our Facebook listener community. Go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Walkthrough. The group will come right up, click to join. We'd love to see you in there. That's all for this week. Thanks so much to Isaac Guzman for joining me. Thank you for listening. My name is Matt McGee. You've been listening to The Walkthrough. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. I will talk to you again next week. Bye-bye. Welcome back and welcome to another edition of One More Minute. You know I love content marketing, so here's a quick tip to help you develop topics for your content marketing. Ready? Go to Google and do a search for living in your town. I would do living in Tri-Cities, Washington. Isaac would do living in San Diego. This also works, by the way, with searches like moving to your town. So, you know, moving to San Diego, moving to Tri-Cities, Washington. In the search results, you should see a section called People Also Ask. That's Google telling you the questions that people ask about where you live. Now, some of the questions will be better than others, but you can use this stuff to guide your blogging, your video marketing, and any other content that you make. One of the questions for our area was, is Tri-Cities a good place to retire? So my wife did a blog post about that. Bonus tip, every time that you tap or click one of those questions, Google's going to show you a few more. So it's like a never-ending supply of questions that you can write about or make videos about. Bottom line, no more excuses about not knowing what content to make. That's one more minute. I'm Matt McGee. Thanks for listening. See you next week with another walkthrough.